Hello fellows, let's discover our topic for today. And now let's start concept two, sensors at work. Known for super sensors. In humans, ears are the organs of hearing to listen music. Owls have extraordinary senses of hearing and sight to be able to find their prey in the dark. Dogs have very sharp senses of hearing and smell which are used in gardening. The Egyptian mongoose makes sound to communicate with other mongoose to move from one place to another or when searching for food. Animals have senses like humans that enable them to communicate with each other and adapt to their surrounding environments. Dolphins have super senses that help them survive through finding food and protecting themselves underwater. The most sharp sense a dolphin has the dolphins have is the sense of hearing, since they can hear all kinds of sounds. So how can dolphins locate organisms and other things underwater? Dolphins have, use a sense known as echolocation that depends on echo to determine the location of other living organisms and objects in the water. First, the sound produced by dolphins travels in the form of waves called sound waves. These waves travel through water. When they hit objects, they bounce back to the dolphin in the form of echo. Echo helps the dolphin determine the location of prey and objects. Each animal can use more than one sense for more than one purpose to adapt to its habitat, as shown in the following example. Fox. The purpose here is avoiding danger. The youth senses are hearing and sight. And also, with, as we said before, the Arctic fox and the Fennec fox, they have super sense of hearing to allow them to find um, prey underground. Chameleon. The purpose here is finding food. The youth senses. The youth senses are sight and taste. Dog, the purpose here is recognizing friends. The youth senses are smell and sight. Monkey, the purpose is identifying objects. And the youth senses are touch, smell, sight, taste, and hearing. Super senses. Some animals can look for their food at night using their super senses. These animals that become active at night are known as nocturnal animals. Why do some animals become active at night? First, in extremely hot places, the best time to look for food is night time, when it is cooler, because it's too hot. Number two, some animals hunt food that is only available at night. So maybe the prey is only active at night, so he, he cannot find it during daytime. Number three, some animals depend on darkness to hide from their prey and surprise them. So sometimes the animal uh, make the camouflage with night or darkness. So how can nocturnal animals hunt without much available light? Supersensory adaptations of nocturnal animals allow them to navigate safely and find food in the dark. Example, snakes. Snakes sense heat of the prey's body using a spe specialized body part in their faces. The purpose is to locate the prey in complete darkness through sensing their body heat. 
bats. Bats use echolocation, like dolphins, to find their food. The sound bounced back to the bats helps them to find insects at night. They pace and move around. Owls. Owls have both extraordinary sight and hearing. Bound shaped face and specialized head feathers pick up and amplify distant sounds, then direct these sounds into the owl ears. So the bound shaped face of the owl helps it adapt to make a super sense of sight, of hearing. Owls' large eyes allow them to detect tiny and faraway movements of their prey that hide in the grass or under the snow. Owls have the ability to turn their heads in all directions to search for prey everywhere. So, talking about uh, senses, we should mention the nervous system. So, what is the nervous system? And what does it consist of? Of course, mammals such as humans, elephants, and dogs have the same structure of nervous system, which consists of brain, spinal cord, and nerves. So these are the main organs in the nervous system. Starting with the brain, the brain is connected to a big nerve that turns the front through the backbone called the spinal cord. So the spinal cord is the part that runs into the backbone. The brain is connected directly to some nerves such as the nerves of the eye and the heart. So the eye and the heart are the two uh, special organs um, that are connected directly to the brain. And the function of the brain is to control center, is, it is the main control center in the body. And we are going to explain how. Second, the spinal cord. Spinal cord is branched into smaller and smaller nerves. And the function of the spinal cord, it helps carry messages to and from the body and the brain. Finally, nerves. Nerves are distributed throughout the body and connect the sense organs and the body parts with the brain function. They carry messages from the brain to the spinal cord and other parts of the body. The body as well as from other parts of the body to the spinal cord and the brain. Here in this example, we can see when our hand is near to a fire, it can sense the heat. So the nerves take this message and deliver it to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord to the brain. And then the brain translates this message and sends another message to tell the hand to move away from the source of fire. So here the brain is the main control center in the body. It translates messages and it sends back message to the body parts to act according to the situation. The nerves transmit information from the sensory organs to the brain in the form of electrical impulses. So as you can see in the picture here, the electric impulses is the form of message that uh, travel through the nerves to the brain. The five sensory organs contain a special type of nerves known as sensory receptors. It means that the eye, 
the ear, the tongue, skin, and the nose have sensory receptors. And they are nerves found in different parts of the body that are responsible for receiving information from the environment, like a receptor. So how does the nervous system work if you smell pizza? Number one, the sense organ, which is nose, receives the information from the environment which is the pizza's odor. Then the sensory receptor of smell that are found in the back of your nose send signals along the nerves to your brain. And these signals are in the form of electrical impulses, as we just said. Three, once the information about the smell reaches your brain, the brain processes that information. It means it translates this information and determines the type of that food. And then it tells you, yes, this is the odor of pizza. So what shall I do now? So the brain sends you another message to act according to the message. Sensing the environment. Jumping Jerba. The Egyptian Jerba is a desert rodent. So first, what are rodents? Uh, rodents is a group of animals uh, like uh, the Jerba, uh, mouse, mice, and rat, and kangaroo. Um, so the Egyptian Jerba is one of the rodents and it searches for food at night. Jerbo adaptation to the environment. We are going to study um, the adaptation for the Jerbo. First adaptation, the Jerbo has large and sensitive ears, so it can detect even a quiet snake. And this one, of course, is a structural adaptation because it's a change in the body of the Jerbo to help, him, to help the Jerboa adapt to the environment and to allow an, an excellent uh, sense of hearing. Number two, Jerboa's feet and toes. They have hair to help it grip the sand when it hops and jumps. Jerbo has long hind legs that enable it to jump a long distance. And of course this is as well is structural adaptation. All that we mention now are structural adaptation because they are changed in the body of the Jerbo to adapt to the environment. Number three, it hops in zigzag patterns so it can escape quickly from danger. And of course this one is a behavioral adaptation. Why? Because it's an act that the Jerboa do. It hops in a zigzag way, in a zigzag pattern to escape danger, to escape from this snake, as example. When a snake makes noises as it comes near a jerboa to hunt it. What's happening? So let's test our uh, understanding uh, from the previous uh, uh, nervous system uh, process and how does the message uh, travel uh, through this system. First, the sensory receptors in the jerboa's ear send a message through a network of nerves to its brain. So the nerves, the sensory receptors, first in the ears, take the message and send it to the nerve, and then from the nerves to the spinal cord, and then to the brain. 
Number two, the red ball brain translates this message. So the brain is going to take this message and translate it or process it. And unless its legs to move, it means that the brain, after processing the information and knowing that uh, there is a snake making, noi making noises, so the brain sends a message back and now to the legs. Why to the legs? To move. To move immediately away from the snake because it's a danger, so he has to escape. Number three, the red ball of strong hopping legs start to jump away from the danger or the snake in a zigzag path. So why in a zigzag path? So the snake cannot predict the movement of the red ball. So this one, that's why it is uh, a behavioral adaptation because it, uh, it's an action from the red ball uh, to, uh, to, uh, to help him uh, uh, escape from the snake. The Jerbo has a sharp sense of hearing and its strong legs for jumping work together with its nervous system to help it survive. The whole response process of the Jerbo running away from danger occurs in less than one second. The time taken by a gerboa to react to a danger is known as a reaction time. So what's the meaning of reaction time? Reaction time is the time taken by the body of a living organism to react to different information from the environment, such as danger. So imagine if this gerboa, uh, there is a snake uh, moving and making noises next to it. If he takes uh, five minutes to recognize uh, or to take the message and uh, deliver it back, so what's going to happen to the gerbil? Of course, uh, it's going to die because it's not fast uh, enough to escape the danger. That's why the reaction time here takes less than one second less than one second. So this whole process of the nervous system in our nervous system takes less than one second to react. So how does the gerboa respond to danger compared to a human? Both human and gerboa avoid danger by relying on sensory receptors, nerves, and brain to sense and communicate messages. Both human and Jehovah move quickly away from danger for their safety. Example, the Jehovah hops in zigzag, zigzag pattern so it can escape quickly from danger. And human moves quickly his hands away when it touches the spines of a cactus plant. Reaction time. Both eyes and ears receive information from the environment then send them to the brain to process this information. So let's check uh, uh, this statement and make uh, and do an experiment uh, to understand more. And we are going to try this experiment first with the, uh, using the sense of sight and then using the sense of hearing. And we are going to make uh, three tries. So the experiment is to uh, hold a, a ruler and then drop it. And then we are going to uh, calculate the time taken uh, to be held by the student. And you can try it at home. So, uh, first using your eyesight and then with only sense of hearing. So we are gonna um, cover your eyes uh, to allow only your sense of hearing to uh, do uh, this experiment. And also we are gonna uh, uh, measure the time uh, for three times. 
and then take the average for e the average for each one. In the two parts of the previous experiment, uh, when the eye uh, saw the meter stick drop, or when the ears heard the voice go, they sent signals to the brain through nerves. The brain passes the information and send messages to the muscles in the hand to catch the stick. You could catch the meter stick faster when you saw it drop, because the brain can process what you see faster than what you hear. Why? Exactly, because eyes and heart are special organs that are connected directly to the brain without, without passing through the spinal cord. So how the nervous system works? A function of the nervous system. Number one, it gathers information through the sensory organs like the eyes, ears, and skin. Two, it makes sense of, translates, or processes this information through the brain. Number three, it tells the body what to do according to this information. Example, when the ears pick up sound waves coming from a chirping bird. The nerves in the ears send a message to the brain which translate these sound waves. Then the brain sends a message to the body about what to do, such as turn to look for the bird on a tree. Note, some messages called reflexes are so fast that you cannot realize it, it such as moving your hand away when touching a very hot cup of tea. Other messages are sent from and to the brain automatically, uh, like the signal of uh, to breathe or the heartbeat. They are signals that uh, are very fast and uh, uh, spontaneously uh, from the brain. The parts of the nervous system work together to sense the environment, interpret the information to decide the best action, send a signal to the body to react. Without all of the parts of the nervous system, the person might not receive, send, or react to the information. Thanks.